we were saying that this PDE form we call the strong form and the corresponding integral form uh, we call the weak form. So PDE form the, was the form 1 and integral form was the form 3. Also we have not yet worked with the energy form that we will do later. So as of now we will let's say work with strong forms and the weak forms. So a couple of reasons of uh, this nomenclature of strong and weak um, comes from the following that the strong form or let's say u comma x x plus l equal to zero this is a point wise requirement which means if this is valid for x between zero to one at each point between zero and one uh, this relation should hold okay so this is a point wise requirement whereas the integral form we have these integra integrations so u comma x v comma x dx equals to 0 to 1 v l dx plus v 1 h so this is a more diffused way of uh, writing it so basically this is applicable to the domain so this is a domain wise requirement so this is a applied in an integral sense rather than a point by point sense so that is one of the reasons why this is a weaker uh, sort of rendition of the same issue. Second thing you will notice that uh, in this you get higher derivatives of the field u of x uh, in this case uh, a double derivative is appearing whereas in this only single derivatives are appearing. Okay. So a higher derivative appears in these PDEs and a lower derivative appears for the integral forms. And hence the requirements on u of x are weaker for the integral form because in this case u of x needs to be once differentiable. Whereas here u of x needs to be twice differentiable. Okay. So these are some very crude reasons of why this is uh, integral form is the weak form and uh, PDE form is the strong form. Uh, of course, there, there are more mathematically rigorous ways of defining these, but we will not dwell too much on that. For us, these working definitions will suffice. Okay. Now, let us look at what are the properties of uh, V of x or W of x, uh, which were the, uh, the arbitrary weight function or the virtual displacement function. So one is that it should have the same differentiability as u of x. Okay. And then uh, we have discussed earlier that it should be 0 wherever there is a Dirichlet condition on u of x. Okay. Uh, you may think about this, uh, that why this is a requirement, but of course you all have a physical intuition behind it, that the virtual displacements must satisfy geometric compatibility of the main system. Let's now look at what are some properties of u of x. Okay. Now you can notice that uh, this integral u of x, u comma x squared was the internal strain energy and this must be finite. So energy of a system must be finite. So this means that a requirement on u of x is that u comma x should exist. So if this u comma x is not finite, then the energy cannot be finite. And another requirement is that this integral as a whole should exist. It should not be infinity. It should be a finite number. Okay. So which means uh, integral 0 to 1 u comma x squared dx should be less than infinity. Uh, now a much more formal way of writing such functions exist. Uh, in the context of uh, you know, Lebesgue spaces or Banach spaces. Uh, so we will not again dwell into too much uh, into these spaces from a mathematical perspective but we will define what we uh, need uh, for our sake. There are a couple of spaces which are uh, of importance for us. One is the so-called L2 space. Okay. <clears throat> the L2 space is called the space of square integrable functions. And this is a Lebesgue space. 
so if f of x is in l2 0 1 uh, it implies that integral 0 to 1 f square dx uh, the square root of that is less than infinity okay which means that this function can be integrated after squaring so hence the name square integrable function so we want u of x to lie in l2 okay because here u of x is being u comma x is being uh, integrated so we want we want u comma x there and we also want u to be in l2 so if uh, the function u doesn't behave properly uh, you know only its uh, derivative behaving properly will also be a problem as a side you may uh, notice that this particular quantity is an induced norm on the dot product which we have defined earlier okay. uh, if you don't know what is an induced norm uh, don't worry about it uh, we will come to it later uh, but in, to those of you who know uh, you can notice this now another space which will be of use to us is the h1 space so this is the first sobolev space Okay. And the idea here is that if uh, u is in h1, it implies that this plus this is less than infinity. Okay. So basically, uh, in loose terms, one may say that if u and u comma x both are in L2 space, uh, u will be in h1 space. And we want u and v both to remain in h1 space for the bar problem okay if the problem changes these definitions may change another note on the side is that from a rigorous mathematical perspective this derivative which appears here is not the regular derivative it is something called a weak derivative okay and this is one more reason why the integral form is called the weak form in fact, this is the real reason that the derivatives appearing in the integrands are weak derivatives and these are not the regular derivatives. And again, we will not dwell on what is a weak derivative. Uh, we will just make a note that you know, this is a weak derivative and uh, we will proceed from there. Next, there is a note on boundary conditions. In the strong form, we had three things which were defined the main pde neumann boundary condition and the richler boundary condition in the weak form we have two things which are defined one is this integral form which was a combination which came after a combination of uh, the strong form plus the neumann condition and then there is this dirichlet condition uh, which uh, goes as it is okay so basically we want to find out functions u of x which satisfy this form subject to the constraint that u of 0 is equal to 0. Okay. And another thing which you will notice is that uh, this Neumann condition which appeared in strong form appears directly inside the weak form. Okay. And for this reason, uh, the Neumann condition is in the FEM uh, lingo is called the natural boundary condition. Okay. So for, from the weak form perspective, uh, this is the natural boundary condition uh, and since uh, this Dirichlet condition has to be enforced uh, strictly uh, this is called an essential boundary condition okay so essential because without imposing it uh, there will be no unique solution for the weak form okay so as we said earlier that convergence with the energy form will be seen later uh, and uh, some of you would have realized that the problem we are solving of this bar problem, this is a Poisson equation. Okay. So you may recall uh, learning about uh, this particular equation, which we said was a Laplace equation. Uh, here we are solving an equation of this kind, which is a Poisson equation. So a Poisson equation represents uh, deformation of an elastic bar you should also recall that this is an elliptic partial differential equation and if you don't please review the 
PD classifications for second order PDs. Okay. Uh, as an exercise, you may think about what are some other physical phenomena that are modeled by the Poisson equation. Okay. And with respect to those physical phenomena, you can think about what are the interpretations of requirements uh, you know, for conditions for u of x and v of x with respect to different physical properties. 